Hello! Welcome to the third part of the video, how to make beer at home. If you haven't seen the previous two parts, you can find the link to them in the description under this video. So far, we have discussed the process of meshing the malt, sparging, filtration and we add the yeast. In today's video, I will tell you about the primary fermentation, secondary fermentation and bottling of our beer. Let's start! Since we added yeast to our beer, 7 days of primary fermentation have passed. So it's time to check the Briggs level, that is the level of sugar that is still left in the beer. As we can see, the Briggs is 5. During meshing, we had quite a long dextrin break, so we kept the meshing temperature at around 72 degrees Celsius. During this break, mainly alpha amylase works, an enzyme that produces various sugars, including their large amount of dextrins. Sugars that they are not fermentable, but they improve the body and slightly sweetness of the beer. So such a high brix comes from the long dextrin break in this case. We drain the beer from primary fermentation into the secondary fermentation, also so-called silent fermentation. The primary fermentation process continues until the yeast has eaten all or almost all of the sugars and lasts about a week depending on the yeast and the type of beer. Silent fermentation is a slow fermentation of leftover sugars and reduction of fermentation aromas as well as clarification of beer. It takes about one and a half to two weeks. At the bottom we can see yeast left over from primary fermentation. This yeast can be used for a production of another beer and when properly stored it can survive in the fridge for about 2 to 3 weeks. After 12 days of silent fermentation it's time for bottling the beer. Let's take a beer sample to check the Briggs level. Remember that everything that our beer comes into contact with is disinfected. So we rinse the tap with boiling water and pure a small sample. Remember to open the lid a little bit or pull out the fermentation tube so as not to suck water from fermentation tube. The sugar level after a silent fermentation drops slightly and now it's around 4.5 bricks. The next step is to add sugar to the refermentation so that our beer is properly carbonated. Depending on the style and personal preferences, we add the right amount of glucose. In the description under the video, I will put a link into the calculator thanks to which you can calculate the amount of glucose you need. Personally, I don't like too much gas in the beer, so I always add less glucose than recommended. Based on the style of beer we are making, we should add about 6.5 grams of glucose per 1 liter of beer. I added 6 grams of glucose per 1 liter to my beer and after tasting it, I can confidently say that next time I will lower the amount of glucose to 5, maybe 5.5 five grams. Returning to the video, boil about half a liter of water in a pot and add the right amount of glucose. Mix everything together truly and pour into disinfected fermenter. The next step is to drain the beer after silent fermentation into the fermenter in which there is water with glucose. When puring the beer, remember to stir it gently from time to time so that the glucose is truly dissolved in the entire liquid. As we can see, the rest of the yeast has settled at the bottom of the fermenter, which will make our beer more clear. The beer is now ready for bottling. However, before we start this activity, our previously disinfected bottles should be refreshed. To do that, pour hemiproxy into warm water and rinse the bottles thoroughly. The active oxygen found in the hemiproxy, like chlorine, disinfects the bottles and then evaporates. Another optional step is to rinse the bottles with the warm water.
When the bottles are ready for use, the caps should be also prepared. Put the right amount of caps into the pot and pure boiling water over it. Hold it about a minute and then the caps are ready for use. Now we mount the beer bottling pipe to the fermenter and start puring beer into the bottles. Remember not to fill the bottles to the end. We pure the few pieces of bottle and then cap them using a special capper. I recommend buying the one you see in this video. Because twin hand cuppers, especially in the hands of an, an experienced person, can cause bottles to break. On the other hand, the use of the table cupper, which you can see in the video, makes work much faster and easier. Finally we put bottled beer in the cool place and store it for about 4 weeks. After that time we can enjoy delicious homemade beer. This is the end of the series on how to make beer at home. If you like the video, please leave the thumbs up and a comment. I also invite you to subscribe to my channel.